Welcome to module 8 of NPTEL NOC course on Poinsett Topology Part 2. So we shall continue the study of local compactness. We have already observed that in our definition of local compactness, regularity is built in. Under certain mild additional conditions like T1ness, it will be a T3 space and then it will be hostile space also. Okay, so what we would like to see is that under this local compactness, many stronger separation properties are possible. So here is illustration, let us begin with that. The first thing lemma here is, take a compact set, a compact and closed subset of a locally compact space. Let N be an open subset in X which contains K. Then there exists an open set U such that K is contained in U contained inside U bar contained inside N and U bar is compact. Moreover, there is a stronger thing here that this kind of separation is actually coming from a function. Namely, there is a continuous function f from x to 0, 1, such that f of k is singleton 0 and f of the complement of u is singleton 1. Okay, it started with a u which is contained inside, which contains so it started with n actually, n is a neighborhood. Okay, so I could have stated it f of the complement of n is also singleton 1. So this is also correct anyway. So, so how do we what, what do you how do you perceive this one? Local compactness ensured for each point like this. Suppose if point and a neighborhood. Then there is a neighborhood U containing U bar, containing Z in, and U bar compact. From a point, we are now extending it to a compact set. So that is the first thing. And then not only that, you can actually get functions like this, like your results type uh, results are true. So proof is not all difficult. Let us go through the proof. For each point x inside k, by local compactness, we can find open sets ux such that x is inside ux, ux bar contained inside n. Okay, this is point wise. Since k is compact, if you take all the ux x inside k, that will be an open cover. Therefore, there are a finite subcover. That means what k is contained inside some finite union of these members, say I will call them as u and u to u n. Union of u n, so I will take it as u. Each u i is contained inside n. In fact, each u i bar is contained inside n. Therefore, u bar, which is the union of u i bars, because it's a finite union, that is also contained inside n, moreover, it being a finite union of compact sets, this u bar is compact also. Okay. So, what I got? k contained inside u contained inside u bar contained inside n. Okay. So, first part is over. Now, see u bar is compact and it is it's, we are working inside a locally compact space okay so it's a closed subspace it's locally compact also it's regular also regular and locally compact we have said it is normal okay u bar itself is normal therefore you can apply the urizons characterization uh, uh, to this k and u bar minus u Okay, k is an open subset, 
u bar minus u is, is k sir k is a closed subset u bar minus u is another closed subset they are disjoint therefore you can get a function g from u bar to 0 1 such that g of k is 0 and g of u bar minus u is 1 okay so this is the standard uh Arizona's characterization which you have seen in the part one of any normal space any disjoint open closed subsets of a normal space can be separated by a function itself like this that's what we have used there now you define f from x to 0 1 finally we want a function from x to 0 1 by the formula fx is gx inside u bar so far okay outside u bar i will extend it by identically one in fact on entire of x minus u i can put it as one see g bar minus u is already one therefore it will agree on these two closed subsets on the intersection of these two closed subsets and on on this subset it's g it's continuous on this subset it's one that is also continuous Therefore, f is continuous from x to 0, 1 itself. And restricted to u bar, it will be g. And it, g has this property, g of k is 0. g of u bar minus u is 1. Right? So, whole function we have got this way. Okay. As an immediate corollary, we obtain several interesting results the first one is quite useful in measure theory okay in a locally compact Hausdorff space given a compact set k contained inside an open subset v there exists a continuous function g from x to 0 1 such that g of k is 1 and g of v complement is 0 by interchanging g to 1 minus g, you can always interchange the role of this k being 0 and g of this one being 1. That is always possible, okay? So that is not, uh, that should not confuse you. So what it says is, in a locally compact Hausdorff space, okay, given an open set V containing a compact set, okay? We have gk equal to singleton 1 and g of complement of v equal to singleton 0. Okay. All that I do is we know that every compact set in a Hausdorff space is a closed set. So, therefore, we can apply this lemma. That's all. Okay. So, this is just a restatement of that. Uh, that part of a lemma in a special case, that's all. All right. So, so this this is what we get. Next, by the way, uh, we will later on prove the same thing, same result in a different way also. Okay, different proof also we will give. A locally compact space is completely regular, is another corollary. Why I am calling it this a corollary? Because they are easy consequences of our lemma. A locally compact space is completely regular. Regularity we have already seen. Okay, it's built in in our definition. Okay, so that is again complete regularity means what? Given any point in X and a closed subset F outside, you know, X must be outside F disjoint from it. We, can, we have to produce a map continuous function g from x to 0 1 such that g x is 1 g of f is single than 0. Okay. So apply uh, the previous theorem with k equal to singleton x and f equal to complement of uh, n equal to complement of f. Okay, previous lemma, you can apply that, then you have got it over. Okay, so locally compact spaces are 
completely regular. So this is what we meant by saying that there is more separation in locally compactness than which is uh, obvious from the definition. Namely, the built-in def built property was regularity. Here now we have got complete regularity, right? Of very different nature, compact set and open subset of that one can be separated and so on. All right. Let us go ahead with this one. A locally compact Hausdorff space, if you put Hausdorffness or just put T1ness, that's enough, is a Tikhonov space. Why? Because we have already seen it's completely regular. Plus T1 is by definition Tikhonov space. That's all. Okay. Now we shall go to a different kind of result for local compact spaces. So local compactness it sits in say, you know, uh, in the juncture of so many different uh, kind of uh, uh, concepts in topology. So this is what we, we will try to see. So next thing is the bare category type uh, result for locally compactness. Okay. In other words, the Bear's theorem is true for locally compact spaces. So every locally compact space is second category or you can say it's a bare space or you can say it is not first category and so on. So let me tell you what it is also. So first of all, the this, this result was proved for complete metric spaces in part one. The proof is here is more or less similar. In fact, it is even simpler. The simplicity comes because of the local compactness. You will see that. So for proving this one in the in the case of metric spaces, we have to do quite a bit of preparation and all that. Here, everything is done now. So we can immediately prove this one. So what is the proof? Start with any countable family of nowhere dense subsets of X. We must prove that the union of all these Fn's, okay, will not cover X actually. We should prove stronger thing, namely its complement of union of all these Fn's is itself dense in X. That's what we will prove and that is precisely the saying that the space X is bare space or it is second category. Okay, start with a family, countable family. Each of them must be nowhere dense. Even the complement will be dense. So that much we will prove. Not only in just it's non-empty is enough, but we will show that it's dense. So let U be any non-empty open set in X. We must show that it's in the complement is dense. None of these Fn's will intersect, uh, will take away, a union of Fn's will not take away this part, is what you have shown, right? So, choose any open set, any point in, inside, inside this open set, okay? In fact, point is not necessary, first of all. We will see that. Take a neighborhood U naught of that, only for that purpose, I am taking a point here such that u naught bar is compact and u naught bar is contained inside u. So what have we used here? Local compactness. Only for that part I want to start with a point inside, inside this non-empty open set. Okay, now u bar u naught bar is compact. Okay. Now there exists an open set, non-empty open set, u1 bar contained inside u0 minus f1 because f1 is nowhere dense. f1 closure does not contain any open set, non-empty open set. That is the meaning of nowhere dense set. So if closure does not contain, f1 also does not contain any non-empty open set. That just means that complement of u naught minus f1 is non-empty. 
Okay, so there is a non-empty open subset. Okay, exactly same way. Take a point here, then take u1 and then disclosure of that and contain inside that. So I am not writing all that here. So I am taking an open subset u1 of u0 such that even u1 bar is contained inside u0. And this u1 bar does not intersect f1. Repeat this process now. u2 bar contained inside u1 minus f2. u3 bar contained inside u2 minus f3 and so on. So keep doing that. What you have what? un bar contained inside un minus 1 minus fn. Okay, that means un bar does not intersect fn. So, what we have? We have a decreasing sequence of open sets, each contained inside the, e, closure of each contained inside the next one, inside the previous one, and each, each of these is compact. Take the intersection. Okay. This W is clearly is the complement of all the Fn's. Why? Because even one of them does not intersect the Fn. So this does not intersect the union of Fn's. Okay. And of course, W is contained inside U. All right. Ui bars are decreasing sequence of non-empty closed subsets of the original u naught bar and u naught bar is compact that's all i need okay once u naught bar is compact all u n bars are automatically compact anyway okay so a decreasing sequence of non empty closed subsets in a in a compact set this intersection is non empty de morgan law applied to uh, compactness, union of, you know, if uh, uh, finite union does not cover the whole space, then the entire union also will not cover the whole space. That is the property of compactness. So we have produced a non-empty open subset inside this U, outside all of U F N S. So that is all what we wanted to prove. Okay. So you see. In three, three or four lines here, yes, I have elaborated it fully. We have a complete proof of Baer's theorem for locally compact spaces. Now I am going to discuss something much deeper. But here I want full participation from you people. If for some chance you feel that it is too much for you, you can, you can, you know, uh, you can take a leave. I mean, you can take. Okay, I will, I will think about it and so on. You can, you know, sit uh, on a side, but make a sincere attempt to uh, try this one. Okay, this is the way. Uh, one becomes a mathematician or one starts doing research work. See, you have observed two phenomena. Namely, a complete metric space is a bare space. A locally compact space is a bare space. So immediately you should ask, what is common between them? What makes them, both of them, a bare space? Okay, where is the hypothesis coming from? Apparent, if you just look at local compactness of complete metric space, they have nothing to do with each other. Indeed, there are lots of complete metric spaces which are not locally compact. There are a lot of locally compact spaces which are not metrizable either. So what is this makes that both of them bare spaces? So I have tried to explain this one in a set of exercises, which are all doable. 
in any case you can try them and then your TAs will help you to solve them if uh, if you have difficulties only if you try otherwise you can take it uh, easy for example percent so on we will not bother you with this one that's what i meant by you can take it easy okay so let's go through this uh, exercises just i am not going to tell you what is it but they are all easily done the first thing is every compact regular space is a bare space see what we have done is locally compact space is bare space but when i say compact a compact in our definition may not be locally compact remember that so i have to put regularity here also but the proof is if you have understood locally compact space bare space just now you can prove this one also the next thing is once you prove this one you can prove this one namely every compact hausdorff space is bare space this is the consequences of exercise one if you think properly the third thing is every open subset of a compact space is a bare space if you prove three you have already proved two but why i have given it like this first you prove this one two and then deduce that every open subset of a compact space is bare space that will take a little more effort okay now all these three is going to tell you that there is more bare spaces than just locally compact spaces or complete metric spaces only for that reason i have put this one now comes the crucial thing every g delta in a compact hausdorff space is a bare space okay so every g delta concept comes here g delta remember just means that intersection of a countably many open sets open set is a in a compact or the bare space is exercise 3 from open set you have to come to g delta here so this is set of the first four exercises okay once you have done that now we will turn our attention to uh, complete metric spaces okay indeed the metric space is not completely is all that necessary you can just work all of these things in a pseudo metric space okay pseudo metric space is just a metric space all other properties are true but property 1 dxy equal to 0 need not imply x equal to y that's all i am just recalling that okay so take a pseudo metric space it will also give you a topology show that every closed subset in it is a g delta so now we have got one single property common to both both these families pseudo metric spaces okay every closed subset g delta and here you know every g delta set in a compact sort of space is a bare space so that must be something that is the key for which these two things to have bare spaces okay so let x d be a bounded and complete metric space the boundedness can be always at attained because every metric space every metric is equivalent to a bounded metric by just taking d divided by 1 plus d that will be a bounded metric always it will give you same topology so this is a mild restriction but it is needed in this exercise start with a bounded and complete metric space okay now why tau is a compact hausdorff space okay let tau d denote the topology induced by this metric on x d induce a metric okay so that i am taking here let e from x tau d to y tau be a topological embedding see here you have metric here you don't have metric but both of them have topology in the topological sense 
this is an embedding embedding means what continuous mapping such that on to the image that mapping is a homeomorphism suppose for every bounded continuous function f from x to r that is defined on x you have an extension of that to the whole of y by continuous extension now why can't i i can talk about continuous extension but this is embedded here so you can think of this as subspace here more precisely all that i want is a continuous function f fat this f fat composite is f okay so suppose this property is also true all these i am hypothesis here for each x belonging to f let fx from x to r denote the function the distance function fx of x prime is distance between x and x prime this distance is the metric coming from x here okay with this function i want to define a map d hat from y cross y to r by the formula d hat of y1 y2 is the infimum of f fat of x on y1 minus f fat of x on y2 take the modulus so these are all non negative real numbers take the infimum so there we get a non negative function here okay on y cross y what is this this is has all the characters of metric except it is not exactly metric it is pseudo metric on on e on x x thought of as subspace of y that e x and e, e x prime distance d hat the same thing as the original distance so what it has happened is d hat is an extension of d on x okay to the space y so d hat is not a metric perhaps it may fail to be a metric but it is a pseudo metric d hat is continuous on y cross y remember y has already a topology on it right d hat will introduce another topology we have to wait for that yet so but this d hat is continuous on y cross y and hence identity map from the original y tau to y to metric topology tau twiddle tau d twiddle this is continuous okay the fourth part is the image of x under e is a closed subset of y tau d twiddle in the new topology metric to pseudo metric topology is a closed subset all that why i have done i have put an arbitrary metric space inside a y tau which is a compact matrix space okay now ex becomes a g delta set in y tau okay so this will really complete the picture why a complete matrix space and a locally compact spaces have this beautifully one property namely being bare space they share this property okay so that is the conclusion of this last exercise which you can read by itself but you will have to wait to see the full thing okay you will have to wait till chapter 5 when we will do compactifications of various things namely a locally compact hausdorff space can be comp compactified what is called as one point compactification whereas a, a pseudo metric space can be compact where a metric space can be compactified what is called as stone check compactification and so on okay that will fully complete the picture but for preparing for before you can take this as granted and then you would have understood the difference here okay so you have plenty of time to understand this one 
not necessarily by the chap by the time we come to chapter 5 or finish this chapter 5 you can again come back to these exercises part of these exercises you might have solved before by that time and then we will be able to see the full picture okay so that's it for today so so thank you so we will meet again next time